with the rookie and we're playing more of Vampire Masquerade. It's been like a week since we recorded, and we should have more time today, I think. Probably. That doesn't matter to you guys, because you're not going to know how many episodes we record, but... Okay, here we go. Alright, apologies. I don't remember if we've done this one yet. But, but it doesn't right. matter, it can overlap, it's fine. Apologies, you must have so many questions. While we're on the topic, perhaps we should start with those related to sustenance. How much do I have to... Feel this hunger constantly. I don't even remember the voice I gave him. Probably regular. Constantly. How much do I have to drink to make it go away? The sad reality is it will never go away. No matter how much you drink, you will always be tempted to have more. Unless you consume someone wholly to the last drop, paying for temporary relief with their life. But that is a one-way road to losing your humanity. <sighs> Best start by just taking a single sip from a vessel. Be prudent. Hot, fresh blood will be more satisfying than most anything they serve in a fancy glass. But it can make you more... I think it skipped a thing. Yeah, um... Yeah. Voracious. <laughs> Voracious was the word. <laughs> what? It's the bottom one there. More. Oh, Not more voracious. Yeah, 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 okay, okay. okay. <laughs> As to how much you should have, it depends. If you're frugal, you can survive many nights without a single drink, but it's risky and will tempt the beast that is part of our curse. Tomorrow I shall take you hunting and we will explore this topic further. The blood you're having tonight should be enough to keep you happy for now. That beast you mentioned, is that a metaphor or a... Uh... Oh, it's quite real, although not in a strictly physical sense. It lives in all of us. Our nature and hunger manifest. Those more religious among us connected to the biblical Cain, the rage of the first murderer cursed by God, seething in all his descendants. I, however, am a child of the Enlightenment. Not that it makes my struggle any easier. I have to be wary like every other kindred in this city. Individual kindred each have a unique relationship to their beast. What yours is going to be remains to be seen. But you do need to keep it under control. Each outburst endangers not just you, but also the masquerade. The concierge returns, asks to give permission to intrude, which Sophie gives with a polite smile and leans in to whisper in her ear, you note that the gallery is now almost empty. I'm being told the gallery is just about to close, but we still have quite a lot to discuss. We'll go to one of my apartments. My jalopy is waiting downstairs. Come. Why don't you get my own? Smile she puts on makes you remember the way you left with the Latina. Felt. Felt with the Latina. It's not arousing, though. More like mag magnetic. You find it hard to argue. Even though you are still suspicious of her authority over you, her charm momentarily wins you over. Sophie leads you to a luxur luxurious silver Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce and invites you to sit in the back. The chauffeur, a broad-shouldered, clean-shaven, middle-aged guy, starts driving immediately. So now she is the, that, that rear-view mirror yeah. left all wrong. Oh, she's hungry now. <laughs> Where did we leave off? Ah, I believe I started telling you a bit about our customs. You've heard the prince refer to our traditions. The chief amongst them is the masquerade. As you might have gathered from us assembling in a niche gallery after closing time, our comings, goings, and doings tend to be somewhat secretive. We do not advertise our existence. We allow myths and modern fiction to morph and muddle the facts. So to the vast majority of kind, we remain bedtime stories and pop culture icons. I love that movie, Blade. Say, is that one television show about a vampire angel still popular? Is this something we know about? Oh, Angel. Okay, this the Buffy spinoff. I guess. I don't know. A, a, I popular, a popular vampire character named Angel got his own spinoff. Okay. You shake your head in confusion. She shrugs and continues talking, looking a little bit more dejected than before. Our clandestine ways help us remain safe. 
allow us to explain away the occasional trip up to the rational minds of the 21st century humanity and dictate much of our interactions with mortals. Is your driver a vampire too? What's, what's the worst that could happen if you're a vampire? I'm sure you can defeat any threat that comes your way. It would surely make things easier if we could. Unfortunately for us, there are plenty of things that harm us. Chief amongst them are sunlight and fire. Both will burn you to ash. That's why we rest during the day. You felt it, I'm sure, that it's more like being dead than being dormant. We have no choice. We are night dwellers, but day sleepers. Some of them... Eh. Some more folk-related threats are just legends, or occasionally a minor nuisance. Garlic, running water, even religious symbols don't repel us unless a wielder is uniquely pure and godly. Stakes through the heart, though, that's something to avoid. They do not destroy, but they do paralyze, which under the right circumstances can often be the same thing. That's the reason to have someone like a trusted driver, Gregory, making sure you're safe when you drift away. We have many enemies, and they often know their advantage lies with daylight. So it's good. Am I right in thinking that having a human friend or two is necessary then, or at least useful? In moderation. In yeah. In best if they don't know your true nature. Also, I would say that subordinates are useful, but friends? I haven't had one of those in many years now. Our little sect supplies social interactions aplenty, but it doesn't really encourage friendship. Alliances of convenience to be broken at a whim? Yes, that's more like it. So I can leave any time, right, lady? No. <laughs> Long-term solidarity does occur in the Camilla, but we are a very um, politicized organization by necessity. Loyalty is your sire, to your prince and to the sect. Friends must remain of distant priority at best for us to maintain the masquerade and thrive as the years pass. With the age comes authority. With, with it comes influence and power, if you wish to reach for them. She seems to be lost in thought and falls silent for a while, leaving you to ponder all the things you've learned tonight. It still feels absolutely unreal, but as piece after piece of knowledge falls into place, the image becomes almost like an entirely logical jigsaw puzzle, whatever you wouldn't believe on your own you've witnessed. Many questions swarm your thoughts, but the one you keep returning to is what your place in this new reality should be. The car stops. You are in the city, in front of an old but well-renovated apartment building. We're here. Would you like to see your lodgings? <laughs> Get my own apartment? That's neat. Consider it the first of many gifts I'm able to grant in exchange for loyalty. Come upstairs. She leads you through a small hall with a light guard. Night guard. With a night guard who greets Ms. Langley with a good evening. And you take the stairs up to the second floor. Sophie opens the door to, the, to room 209. Inside are all the amenities you could nice. expect from a modern apartment and some you wouldn't have deemed it necessary just the previous night, including thick lines on the windows. The back room has a comfortable-looking bed and a thick steel door with several sturdy-looking locks, but no windows. Well, how do you like it? It's way too cheerful for what we're looking at. <laughs> this is great, thank you. I'm glad. Make yourself at home. Tomorrow, I will take you hunting and discuss the blood in more detail. I'll let you get comfortable. The keys are on the television set. I'll come pick you up tomorrow night. Use the back room for rest. You can lock the doors just in case. It stings a bit when she leaves. It's like the room suddenly became a few shades dimmer. You inspect the kitchen, hoping to find something to drink. Nothing. No regular food, either. Feels strange that... Quidar could be more thoughtful, 
could be a more thoughtful host than your new sire. Even if only in that respect, you briefly wonder if the sheriff might have a hidden side. With nothing left to do, you lie on the couch with the TV playing in the background for company. Columbo reruns. Just one more thing. I, it's been a very long time since I've seen that guy in action. Kojak reruns. Wow, they reference Kojak the Night Stalker. President of the United States got himself into a serious trouble again. Oh, I know when this was made. <laughs> President of the United States got himself out of trouble again. Fuck. Oh. We have no opinion on this matter. <laughs> Student starts yelling over each other about things that seemed a little less insignificant just two days ago. You start drifting off, reflecting about another night of confusing conversations and worldview shattering revelations. How many more before you finally understand? Wait, how many more before you finally understand what happened to you and what you're supposed to do now? You keep coming back to the life you left behind. The people you should contact, the things you want to pick up from your apartment, you wonder when you'll have the chance for either. As you start to feel the same tiredness that made you drift into a cold night's sleep, you settle in the back room, the bed is comforting, the lack of windows, less so. You leave the light bulb on, looking at it, you realize it's the closest you'll ever come to staring at the sun on a breezing summer day again. A wave of melancholy overwhelms you. A few minutes later, your consciousness fades, and you take the plunge into darkness again. Sinking, 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 sinking. Bum, bum, ba, da, da. And then the loading screen appears. Hunger is at the heart of vampire's existence. To, to ignore it is to tempt the beast to take over in its dire to desire. feed. Desire to feed. Wow, I'm tired. To overindulge in feeding may threaten the masquerade while staining what humanity you have left. The Cortes of New York having high hunger is indicated by a progressively thicker bloody frame around the screen like the ones you see now. Oh, this is Tutorial Man. Is this Tutorial? Yeah, Tutorial Man. As you hung, as your, fucking, just finish. As your hunger grows, so does this indicator. Your hunger may increase when you call upon your vampiric powers or when you need to mend your wounds after a fight. When your hunger reaches the maximum level, you'll reach a warning after you complete a piece of the story. Ignore it at your own peril. Bum, bum, bum. Some choices might only become visible if your hunger is high enough. Similarly, high hunger may block off some choices, as you'll be able to see after pressing continue. Blocked off option. Oh, I can't pick this option yet. Right. To decrease your hunger, you will need to feed whenever you see a feeding opportunity. You can take the risk of to hunt and slack your Slate. slake your fucking pick pick normal words. <laughs> You'll need to keep the hunger at bay if you are to uphold the masquerade and survive the nights that await you. Then give me options and not just like blocked off options. Oh, God damn it! You open your eyes. The bed isn't warm. The room is filled with artificial light from the ceiling. A solid metal door is closed. Normally you'd stretch for a bit. On some morning you'd probably throw a quilt over yourself and snooze a moment longer. But that was before. The way you woke up now, you are fully conscious. No grogginess. Nothing weighing you down. Just the nagging need in the back of your head. Hunger. Not as severe as last time, but unmistakably there. You get up and open the door to the main room. A digital clock on the TV shows you the time, 9.04 p.m. You walk over to the blinds and retract them cautiously. The only light coming from the NYC's artificial nighttime luminescence. So that's what your walk waking hours are going to look like now. You miss the sunlight already. You seriously consider just walking out of the apartment and figuring this all out by yourself, but then you come back to the memory of Quieter's exotic sword being raised in the gallery. Maybe sitting around isn't that bad an idea after all. You 
keep jumping channels for around half an hour and then switch to streaming services. Almost as if the universe has had a sense of irony, you catch true blood in the flood of recommendations. See, a normal game would tweak one letter. <laughs> like, like Drew's Blood would have been the name, you know? It, it's boggling my mind how they're getting away with this. The doorbell rings. It's Sophie. Good evening, Jack Death. Sleep well? It's not exactly like normal sleep, is it? I suppose it isn't. Some say it's more like being dead, but we wouldn't know, would we? It's no use reflecting on it anyways, except that this is who you are now. I love how everybody's attitude is like, well, you're a vampire now. Fucking suck it up! <laughs> you made the right choice yesterday. I can teach you many things about yourself. Your blood, its desires, and its powers. We will begin tonight. You are hungry, yes? I'm sure you are. Our kind always is. There is only one remedy, the blood. The drinks we had yesterday at Elysium are not the usual way you slake your thirst. So tonight I will assist you in your first foray into hunting. You need to learn to sense the kind of blood you desire. To understand how you can use the kind's vulnerability to your advantage. So let me get this straight. We're predators. Humans are prey. That's pretty grim. I know what you feel. I remember the notion. But you will inevitably grow beyond it. You need blood to thrive, but there are many ways to take it. Some more humane than others. <laughs> You will find that drinking moderate amounts of it regularly will keep the hunger and the whispers of the beast away. You might think yourself monstrous, but there is a balance to be found here. The kiss gives the kind pleasure. You might remember this from your own embrace. Some can even become addicted to the sensation. But, if you do it right, they tend to re misremember your beauty. After all, vampires do not exist. They are myths, fairy tales, and pop culture mainstays, correct? She gives you a sly, knowing grin. That is why the masquerade is so important, and even more crucial when you feed. I noticed you turn British too now. <laughs> How do I choose who to feed from? Are there better or worse uh, targets? Isolated kind. Sorry. Isolated kind are pretty easiest prey, of course, but much depends on context. Hunting requires a different approach in a busy club than it does in an empty street. With time, you'll have the luxury of finding your preference in hunting method and prey. For now, I suggest experimenting in moderation. Feeding from the same area repeatedly can be dangerous, but by branching out, you risk the ire of other kindred whose domains you trespass. Luckily for you, New York City is more forgiving in this regard. New York is in... New York is in somewhat of a unique position. Many of its neighborhoods remain contested or unclaimed. The reason for this is a lesson for another time. But keep the following in mind. Take opportunities to feed when they present themselves in these upcoming nights. As long as you hunt cautiously the respect of the mas and respect the masquerade at all times, you should be fine. To wit, I want you to join me for a trip tonight. Come downstairs. Gregory is waiting for us. Gregory? Is he going to F up the Five Nights at Freddy's Super Pizza Play? I know you don't get that. It's fine. <laughs> The busy street. <laughs> the busy streets fill. What? The busy street fills the air with traffic noise, pedestrian chatter, and a mix of smells that disorient you momentarily. These warm bodies contain what you want, what you need. You catch yourself. Did you really just think of these people as mere sources of blood? It takes a nod from Sophie to break your train of thought. Her. Driver opens the door for her and then tips his hat to you, gesturing to the back of the car. 
Car casually joins the somewhat the somewhat thinned New York traffic. It's still busy in a way only one of the biggest cities in the world can be, but compared to the daytime commute, it's a pleasant drive. You barely have time to gather your thoughts and formulate new questions before the car comes to a stop. You're among the tall skyscrapers that make up Manhattan's iconic skyline. Come, Jack Death, park the car, Gregory, will you? The driver just nods and Sophie gets out. You join. The car farted. You join her, and the two of you walk through the glass doors together, then take the elevator up. You first notice an empty stage with the instruments of a string quartet still in the back, then take in a few dozen chairs in front of it. The concert seeming concluded, the patrons, all smartly dressed and posh, have spread out all over the hall. Sophie strides confidently inside, produces an invitation from her purse, then she flashes the front of the security guard. You follow close and are left through without issue. Let's start easy. A social setting like this one would usually provide quite challenging for an inexperienced kindred, but consider this evening a small gift from your patron. I'm hoping to procure for you a willing vessel. Just remember that I told you about taking small steps. This one will have a soft spot for... This one I have a soft spot. Sorry. This one, yeah, I... this one I have a small soft spot for. No, this one I have a soft spot for. Don't damage her. I make no promises. <laughs> no. Couple cuts up. All right. <laughs> now let's see here. Ah, there he is. She notices somebody in the crowd, flashes a heart melting smile, and suddenly even you feel drawn to her. You haven't thought about it before, but it's laid clear before you in this moment. Sophie is beautiful. Just looking at her is a privilege. Just being with her makes you feel elated. Everybody in the crowd, but especially the man who's almost tripping over himself to reach her, clearly agrees. Edgar, I'm so happy to see you. How is your daughter? Is she with you? Oh, there she is. Julie, my girl, come here, please. There's someone I'd like you to meet. Oh, God. The young woman who walks across the hall can't be more than 19 years old. It's clear from her mismatched earrings and the partly faded purple hair dye that she doesn't fit this crowd. Julie, this is Jack Duff. I think the two of you here should get acquainted while I talk business with your dad. Awfully boring stuff, I assure you. I'm positive you'll like each other. No, my dear, I don't think you... Shut up! <laughs> the girl gives you a shy smile and nods towards the balcony stairs. You follow somewhat unsure what it is exactly Sophie expects you to do. You reach a secluded space from which the entire lobby is visible. All eyes are on Sophie. They listen intently, then laugh when she does. Julie saves you the trouble of figuring out the next step. If you're with Sophie, then I guess you're, um, I mean that you, you know. I hate how innocent she looks. Why? Because I don't like what I'm supposed to do. That's not, that's not a dirty thing. I don't want to kill this kid. Or even turn her. She, she told you not to do either of those. I thought we're, I'm supposed to feed on her. You don't have to kill if you feed. The, the human body has eight pints of blood. You I don't, I don't understand pints. why she wants to be fed upon. They told you, kind of. It was hinted at. I don't understand why, though. I, okay. Right. You feel, they feel elation when you do. Oh, it's like a, a high? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, so she's a druggie. She puts her wrists to her hips and gives Whips. herself a theatrical nip. Gives her, and gives herself... Okay. Then looks at you embarrassed, but also hopeful. What does she ask you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes, I do. She takes off her jacket, unbuttons her sleeve... Then rolls it up. You see a tattoo of a cat in the in an astronaut suit. One feline eye winking at you. There, just enjoy. Perfectly warm smile and a blush. It's an awkward smile, but whatever. Ha! <sighs> ha! 
Okay. Such a moral conundrum. Okay, okay, okay. Um. Yeah, you know what? We're gonna make this decision next time. So, uh, thank you for joining us, guys. We'll see you next episode. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.